Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. Hope you're having a great day and had a happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you again so much for the wonderful feedback and uh, support from yesterday too. Uh, my community has been very, very helpful in just letting me know that I'm on the right track with my analysis. So it's really nice to know that. Uh, congrats to our community members here just quickly uh, for some awesome profits. HBAR, 43% in uh, two trading days. Uh, Tau, 71% in seven days, and SEY, 12 hours, 24%. So we caught some nice little, um, nice little trades over the last 24, 40 hours. And good thing is we just said it and forget it and didn't have to worry about it. So that's the great thing about uh, proper analysis. You just got to trust the TA, let it work out, let it do its thing, and essentially just... Um, you know, make sure you try not to overanalyze things. Either way you look at it here with Solana, it's performing very similar in a lot of ways to what we'd expect, but a bit of both too. Like it didn't come back down to bounce off this 0.68 FIB level. Instead, came up to reject off of that level, came down to 0.5, <laughs> bounced off that. Now we're back up here. Bob's your uncle. The whole thing's just a, a funny thing. Uh, anyways, uh, it's pretty much performing similar to both potential playout scenarios. It's just a little bit of a mess. So this is all the more reason why you use low leverage, folks, because just say you'd used high leverage, you probably would have got destroyed in both directions and be kind of pissed off right now. It's not worth it. Trust me on this, folks. Uh, slow, steady gains is the way to go. People don't realize that cryptocurrency, you can make a lot of money in this industry if you are just patient and not being um, an emotional idiot. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a quick look here. I just want to kind of throw this out there as well with liquidation. When we talked about this previously, there was a lot of liquidation to the uh, to the downside, if I recall correctly, or no, wait. It was the upside. I post that, that my playout chart in my Twitter, Telegram, and Discords, just so you know. But uh, again, this is kind of that level there. So part of it got swept at 245 to 250. Still some upper levels uh, remaining. So friendly advice, when you see this kind of liquidation forming on any kind of coin, the likelihood of that price action getting retested is pretty high. So with the overall sentiment being pretty bullish for Bitcoin, like the I analyzed that just a moment ago. Obviously, you should watch that daily if you aren't already familiar. Uh, but when I cover that, I always look at you know liquidation, trend lines, uh, support and resistances, and it's literally looking like a 90% probability of further upside. We have a pretty significant cup and handle pattern forming too. I don't have it drawn out on this playout chart, but within my community, I did post that for our trade alerts here. Let's go ahead and give you perspective. It's not the cleanest, of course, they never truly are, but it's coming up to reject off this local high range and it would make sense for it to retest this local high here too, right? In other words, that 0.618, uh, that golden pocket at about 96.5. So if the price does pull back for Bitcoin, that's a good pivot point. And if that happens for Bitcoin, then I feel like Solana will come down to its local point of control at about 237, maybe in that range, perhaps even lower 232, and then bounce from there. We'll look at that here in a minute, but uh, the takeaway here is that I think 247 and 250 is an inevitability, uh, just based on the simple fact that Bitcoin is more likely to behave in that similar fashion to the upside for itself. And Solana lately has been um, selling off a little more aggressively when Bitcoin pulls back, but it also increases uh, 2x of Bitcoin as well. It's kind of like the standard Solana routine. Okay. Uh, either way, we have more longs than shorts in the market right now, and we would take a quick look at open interest. Let's go ahead and see... Uh, roughly, we have pretty heavy concentrations at 240. So folks uh, that are heavy in the local range here are still in the green. And we've, got, of course, got some previous resistance at about 261. And I know it seems strange, but if you're not familiar with this, open interest or points of control, these are areas of concentration where people are you know, buying the most Solana, for example. Um, those are commonly referred to as support and resistances just based on the fact that people feel like it's a good value. They're going to continue to add at those levels. Or if it's above it, then it's more likely that people are going to sell because they feel like it's a good value and the price may not continue higher and they're going to get rid of it. So that's kind of where that comes from, in case you're not familiar with why we look at that. Uh, we take a look at the weekly here. Let's just quickly summarize here. I mean, most coins are going to be extremely bullish on weekly timeframes, um, and a lot of them are exuding the same behavior here. They're coming up to a stochastic divergence. So I want to just kind of give you some friendly advice here on stochastic. In my experience, over the last 20 years of using it, um, Pretty, pretty consistent with the RSI. Um, it's a good indicator, indication of an early reversal, but the first time in these momentous uptrends generally doesn't carry as much weight as the second. So that leads me to believe that if you know we're due to continue further up before we pull back a little more aggressively, that would make more sense. Uh, again, that's just generally the concept. And again, the weekly time frame it takes weeks for this to happen, so it takes a little while. It's going to be a very slow indicator letting us know where we're at. But if we look at the RSI, it kind of topped out at 70. So while we could see the price continue higher for Solana, it does let us know we're kind of at our tentative top. Okay, so there's that. But I don't really put a ton of emphasis on the weekly time frame. I think it's helpful to know, but it's not. It shouldn't be your only barometer for uh, for trading. 
Unless, of course, you're like a buy now and sell years from now kind of person. That's a different story. But the weekly time frame is very, uh, it's very slow. So you want to recognize that. Anyways, the daily, probably a little bit more impactful here. We can see we're over the 20 day SMA still. Even though we um, you know, broke free from our short term descending trend line, we're maintaining over the 50 and the 20 day SMA. That's super important. We look at our RSI, we're over 50 in the, on the RSI here. Stochastic swinging up. MACD is trying to converge. Uh, while it's not perfect, it's mostly positive. Okay, majority of it is looking good here. So awesome, awesome stuff there. Oh, you know what else is also positive and wonderful? I forget, I always uh, forget to highlight this. Video Index, folks, check them out. Link down below for this awesome trading competition coming up next month. Uh, correction, that's actually not a competition. It's a trading deposit bonus. Um, but I think depending on the overall deposits and how much volume we have in the month will determine your benefit too. Anyways, upwards of 12K in deposit rewards. Really easy, awesome stuff. Check that out with your own time, of course. If you have questions, feel free to reach out, but they're like our primary exchange uh, because there's no KYC or VPN required. We really love them. Uh, specifically here in the US and Canada, uh, UK as well, of course, we pretty much everyone uses them, but uh, it's easier in the States because we have such stupid requirements here. Okay, looking here at the four hour time frame. keep in mind, I can update our, our fit levels here soon, kind of see where we're at, but these are fairly relevant here in the overall sense of this local, you know, this local extension. So um, I'll draw out a new playout chart, I'll post it on our Twitter, Telegram, and Discord, but for now, this golden pocket here for the macro is a little bit more of a of an area that we want to pay attention to because staying above that is important. 242 has been proven to be a resistance range for us. If you look here, we spent a lot of time there in the past uh, before we broke out and there's a good chance we might accumulate again and continue higher. You also got to recognize too, this does look like a pretty obvious uh, head and shoulders pattern here. So that is a bit of a concern, but a lot of that is contingent on Bitcoin, right? I don't think this will play out if Bitcoin continues to go higher. It just wouldn't make any sense. And I do presume and feel like we're going to see Bitcoin continue higher after it pivots and bounces off its local 0.6 and 8 FIB level. Okay, so again, we're looking at, uh, I personally feel we're going to see a bounce off of this local area here at 96.5. That's the local high. It would make a ton of sense for the price to retrace and bounce there. Again, mainly because Bitcoin has a lot of continuation factors, uh, that would lead me to believe that this head and shoulders shouldn't play out. Okay, just know it exists. Okay, there's an important thing. So the truth is, when the head and shoulders, once we break the neckline, which is kind of this area here, that's when you would want to maybe consider shorting. But for now, it's not really worthwhile. I, I think the probability that playout's pretty low uh, if pe pending Bitcoin doesn't make a make a reversal down to the low 90k range. Okay. Bitcoin stays over 95, 96K. I think there's a solid chance Solana will continue higher. Okay. So there's that. Um, we could also, you know, you could also be like, oh no, there's a bear flag too, right? Uh, there's a lot of reasons why the price action could continue lower. This is not really the greatest starting point for Solana or the greatest pattern uh, forming. But you got to recognize too, patterns only are valid when the rest of the, of the analysis is concurrent with that. So we look here, we're under the... 50-day SMA, that's generally not great, but we're over the 20-day SMA. We are in a situation where we're over 50 on the RSI for the moment. So we close above that here today. I think we're going to be in much better shape, but um, I'm not super confident that along with Solana makes sense right now, just because I expect Bitcoin to pull back a little bit and uh, we got to see kind of how it performs first. So that's kind of where we're at there on the four hour. I know it's kind of a mixed bag, but oftentimes when you have a mixed bag like that, you don't take a trade. It's really that simple, folks. And I'd I don't know why people struggle with it because they just have their favorite coins to trade and they kind of insist on trading them, which I get. I, I stick to my my you know five or ten favorites too. But if my five or ten favorites are not showing good qualities, I just wait. There's no other way around it. So just practice patience, folks. It's easier said than done, but it's totally an awesome benefit if you can get used to it. Uh, here's a cool constellation. We're over twenty. Uh, sorry, we are over uh, the cloud. We have a conversion line of above the baseline, lagging spans free and clear. There's a lot of reasons here why a long position should work out for Solana. Just know we double topped here, of course, and there's a chance we continue to pull back concurrent with Bitcoin. But if Bitcoin can continue higher, push towards or punch towards that 100K level, I think there's a solid chance that Solana will follow too. So we're in this weird place right now where a lot of little indications are showing that Solana should go up. There's some divergences that are a little bit concerning for me, to, concerning enough to not want to take a trade. But also with Bitcoin pulling back, it just makes sense that we're going to get a retracement. So again, there's just little things like that that are happening here. Um, I think the best thing to do right now is to just chill. <laughs> it's not take a trade, but 
again, not everyone can do that. So if you insist on a trade, just ensure you use a good, you know, proper risk management. Um, I would say an invalidation for a long would be somewhere in the 230 range, just because this is this has proven to be somewhat of a good support level here. Um, and then, of course, we got a lot of confluence there at this range with the local low. I think there's a decent chance we stay over 230. But if we lose that, there's a good chance we're probably going to go lower with that potential, you know, that macro head and shoulders pattern. All right, folks. Well, that's what we got here. I know it's not the most amazing, but it is what it is. That's how the charts are in most cases. I'll clean this up, post a playout chart on our Twitter, Telegram, or Discord. Looks a little something like this if you're not familiar. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Really deeply appreciate your, uh, your support and just being an awesome part of my life. Thank you again so much. We'll look forward to seeing the next one. Have a good rest of your day. Take care.